All right. Good evening. I was going to say good night, everyone. <laughs> the end of the live stream. I hope you're having a great Wednesday or whatever time of the year, day, month that you're watching this. We're talking about the question, what about stainless steel countertops? And that's the one question I do get asked quite a bit about whenever I release a video about the topic of any type of countertop, like the one I did last week on Saturday, talking about the issues with quartz countertop. But every time I do put out a video about any type of countertop material, then I do get quite a lot of questions about what about stainless steel. So tonight we are going to talk about stainless steel countertops, answer a whole bunch of these questions, hopefully inform you about some things maybe you never heard of before concerning stainless steel countertops. And uh, if you are looking to, you know, put in countertop for your kitchen, might this be an option for you? Well, this hopefully will give you some ideas on uh, what you can do for stainless steel uh, in your kitchen and uh, whether or not it's a good thing to, to do or not. Well, thank you so much for joining the live stream. And uh, if it's your first time, make sure you say hi in the chat. We'll jump on for questions a little bit later. And uh, there's a lot of people in the chat here who love to chat with you if it's your first time. So do say hi, tell us where you're from and uh, you know, start up a conversation. And uh, I'll, I'll jump in eventually once, uh, once I get through this content. So we are chatting about Stainless steel countertops. What about stainless? The big question. What do I do? I don't know anything about stainless steel. We we know it's in restaurants. They use it in chef grade kitchens and commercial kitchens. Why not? Why not? You know, put it in our kitchen. How come it's not uh, thought about more as an option? Um, to be honest with you, it's not something I've ever sold in my life. And I think partly because it was something that needed to be fabricated elsewhere. And so I was selling a product that you know I. I had that I could sell that I had, I guess, a fabricator for, and we never had anything like that. So it was, it's not something I was completely uh, familiar with in uh, my timeline of, you know, selling kitchens and, and countertops. Quartz was the big thing, of course. That's what everyone wanted. So, what is stainless steel countertop? Well, stainless steel countertop starts off as a bunch of ingredients, like a lot of countertops do. And these ingredients, are uh, a mixture of a bunch of things. For instance, there's iron and chromium, chromium and nickel and a few other little um, chemicals, uh, metals that go in there. And these ingredients are put into the mix, into the batter, so to say, and they have a, a, they're, they're, they're heated up and uh, molded into stainless steel. Now there's different grades of stainless steel. So I'm gonna touch on this because this is kind of interesting information. There's different grades of stainless steel and I'm not talking about the gauges. It's There's different grades. And uh, for instance, there's a 316 stainless steel, which is used a lot in commercial applications, hospital grade, laboratories, marine grade, things like that. There's also a 304 grade of uh, stainless steel, which is what you'll find in residential countertops and other applications like that. And there's other grades like 403 or 430 or something like that. And these are the type of grades that would be used in a, the appliance industry. There's a, a bunch of these different grades. And basically the grade of countertop is de determined by the amounts, the ratio of the particular ingredients in the mixture. And so if you wanna have the 316 type of countertop, this is the you know ratio of the amounts of ingredients, you know, a teaspoon of this and a cup of that. and. The, Th th you know, three three tablespoons or whatever, and you come out with this particular grade of countertop. Now this is put through this process where it's heated and cooled, all these materials. It looks very like, uh, well, industrial obviously, but it looks like something from a Star Wars movie. And then it is, uh, as it hardens, it's rolled onto sheets or poured into molds and formed into whatever you're you know, wanting to make it into. And as those sheets cool, you get the, what we would consider to look like stainless steel sheets. It comes on a roll and uh, at the manufacturing facility, they can you know, put a particular sheen on it or, or put some kind of um, you know, finish on it to make it look, you know, the, the stainless that you're, you're used to looking at. And then of course you have these rolls, almost like rolls of paper at a paper plant or, you know, rolls of toilet paper. I don't know. And then they go out to the various fabrication plants around the world to be formed into whatever they're going to be formed into. 
So for instance, we're very familiar with stainless steel sinks. So these sheets would go and they're molded and welded and cut into stainless steel sinks. Now a little bonus tip here at the start, when you're looking for a stainless steel sink, if you can find one that's been molded, it's generally a better sink than one that's been welded. And uh, so if you if you can find out that information from wherever you're buying your sink from, that's an interesting you know piece of information to have. And of course, they mold it and cut it and shape it into countertops like this one is going to be um, eventually installed in, in a home or a restaurant or you know wherever. And so stainless steel starts this journey as just these mixture of chemicals and is you know, brought together like all kinds of other materials are and made into this, this product. Now, when we talk about the grades of stainless steel, for instance, this would be probably a 304 grade stainless steel because it's going to be used probably in a residential kitchen or similar. And uh, because of that, it's very, um, it is, uh, it's not magnetic. So I don't know if you've, if you've, try to put a magnet on stainless steel countertops magnets they're not magnetic where other grades of stainless steel are magnetic for instance uh, the the ones that we'd use on your fridge are actually a magnetic and uh, these particular this particular grade would be weldable where other grades aren't weldable so they have all these different grades the one that we're most concerned about is this one and we would never really want to know that information anywhere ever ask because it would be assumed that they're using the grade for countertops that's needed and uh, just interesting as we get in here, and we'll, we'll talk a little more about some of the pros and cons, but the, um, when it comes to uh, you know, major large pieces, of course, it was I just found this interesting, the way that they would mold uh, the ends and put a seam together for a miter. So if you're interested in, say, a laminate countertop or any kind of countertop that has a seam, uh, the, the seams on stainless steel are very nice, very can be very sleek and, and you know, almost... If they're done well, you almost don't even see them. And uh, so it's um, a really, really interesting countertop. So that, that's just a brief intro to what stainless steel, you know, how it, how it came to be, what it is, and why we use it. Now, in my, my thought here, as we look a little bit more into this, stainless steel to me is sort of like a glorified laminate because of the way that it's manufactured and put together. There is a substrate underneath, and then you have the stainless on top that's wrapped around it. And um, but of course, it's miles ahead of laminate in terms of its durability and heat proofness and scratch. Well, it does scratch, but its repairability and you know all the other things that that stainless steel claims to be. So that is just a, a little bit to show you, you know, the process of where stainless steel came from, and and um, you know, just interesting to know. Now, well, the, the big question, of course, is price. And, uh, you know, this is something I found on the internet. It's uh, really not that helpful, but it kind of gives us an idea of the price range for uh, what we'd be looking at when we're buying stainless steel uh, for a countertop. So you have your normal to average to low to high end. So on the low end, $1,200. This is very, I mean, you, you got to know that there's particular, you know, there's a lot of variables here we'll talk about in a second. Uh, the high end, 8400 $8, the low end, 1200 the average $4,500. So I guess they're they're gathering this data of what people have paid for their countertops based on a whole lot of uh, variables. And this is sort of the average range, which is not bad for a countertop. And, uh, but how do we, how do we get to this pricing and, and where does this kind of pricing come from? And where do, you know, what, what do you, what are the things you have to consider? So generally, the, what, at least from what I can tell is that uh, the, the price range for stainless steel is anywhere from 60 to $150. Now, a square foot and I'm fabricated. So not, you're just not buying a sheet, you're buying this fabric fabricated. And there's things that go into the fabrication that you need to be aware of. And this is what'll determine the price for you. So these are these are the things. So number one is the gauge. So the, the actual thickness of the stainless steel that is uh, you, that you're using. You may be familiar when you're purchasing a sink, if you buy an 18 gauge sink or a 16 gauge sink, this just has to do with the thickness. Something that is a lower gauge is a thicker stainless and a higher gauge is a thinner stainless. And so if you want a very good quality sink, then something with a lower gauge is really good quality. They have 12 gauge and 14 gauge, but usually for the residential market, 16 and 18 is generally around what you'd be looking at. 18 being very common for most sinks, you know, and 16 being probably a little higher price sink uh, as well. 
uh, though they probably do have other gauges for sinks uh, that you can choose from. But your countertop surface as well can be different gauges, the different thicknesses, and of course that's going to determine the price that you pay. Uh, the substrate, which is the substrate, is the 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 plywood or the particle board or the MDF or the, the, the channels, the metal channels underneath the countertop surface that give it structure. Because stainless is just a sheet, it's very flimsy, that would never be a countertop, that'd be all over the place, it'd be like, you know, playing your thumb on a on a saw kind of thing, you know, one of those, uh, one of those saws, whatever you call them, a wood saw. <laughs> anyway, so the substrate underneath, if it's plywood, as opposed to maybe something else, it could be more expensive. So this is at the fabrication place they would have a particular substrate that they use a lot of the times it's plywood because it's very sturdy and um you know resistant to uh, you know water getting in there or whatever as opposed to say an mdf or a um particle board but the substrate doesn't matter the finish you can get different finishes on a uh, a stainless steel countertop uh, there's there's ones that are more common we'll look at a couple here in a little bit but you can get you know the brushed finish and you can get you know hammered finishes and different types of, of finishes that will um you know you might just have a particular look that you're looking for and they had, do have different finishes they all cost different uh, amounts of money the edge profile we'll look at a few in a little bit here but the edge profile matters because there's different edge profiles and they depending on how elaborate they are then they can um be uh more or less money the how many welds that you have so if you are if you ha have a lot of welds in your countertop a lot of different places that need to be welded uh, during fabrication this is going to add up the cost the installation of course is going to be determined on on this usually the price of the square foot price of whatever uh, includes the installation so that's also something that you should ask when you are sourcing out any countertop does the price include installation or can you just buy it yourself and install it yourself as well then, of course, there's the markup on that product, and this is really determined by whoever's selling it to you and how much money they're making off of selling that product. There's the visual thickness. This isn't the gauge, but this is how thick you want it to look. So how much substrate is going to be there? Do you want it to be two inches, three inches, quarter inch, like whatever the case may be? More material equals more money, and so the visual thickness is going to play into how much you're paying. How many cutouts there are? Do you have a sink cutout or is there something being inserted like an arranged top or a cooktop? Any type of cutouts uh, is going to add to the price. And then the add-ons, such as maybe you want an integrated sink, something that's completely all one piece of stainless. Maybe you want a, an integrated backsplash so that there's no, no seams or anything for water to penetrate anywhere. There's different types of add-ons that you can get. And these add-ons all, of course, cost money. So that's kind of the breakdown of, of what you're paying for when you're buying a countertop. You know, you go to the store and you just purchase some countertop, but there's a lot of things in that price that, that make that up. So that's just to give you some background. I found these interesting. These are some frequently asked questions, and hopefully you can see this, but I'll read it to you. Uh, this is, can you cut directly on stainless steel countertops? And it says a stainless steel is durable, but it is not advisable to cut directly on the surface. It will scratch and so show signs of wear. You can, however, set hot pans and stainless uh, on stainless steel without fear of scorching the surface. So stainless steel is going to scratch if you, you're, you're cutting on it, but it is very durable uh, to heat. Does stainless steel kill germs and bacteria? This one was interesting. Stainless steel does not have any uh, an antimicrobial effect like some forms of quartz but it's very easy uh, to clean uh, and sanitize. So quartz is uh, non-porous. And I'm not sure what they mean by the antimicrobial effect of some quartz. I've never known quartz have any antimicrobial effect other than it is also non-porous. And so it resists, resists the growth of bacteria due to the fact that there's no place for water to penetrate and therefore bacteria to, to hold on to and accumulate. And also stainless steel is the same same way. So it's very, very um, sanitary. And that's why they use it in restaurants. And it's food grade safe. And do, do stainless steel countertops conduct electricity? This was interesting. I never thought about this one. Um, but I guess it's something that would be interesting to think about on whether or not uh, am I going to get electrocuted using 
my stainless steel countertop? And it actually is, yes, but stainless steel conducts electricity more slowly than other metals like copper, gold, aluminum. And this is because stainless steel is an alloy. Uh, some of the uh, elements in stainless steel, which help it fight rust and corrosion, uh, interfere with the flow of electricity. So just something interesting to think about. Uh, I guess just be a little extra cautious around your stainless steel. Uh, you don't, um, you know, light your hair on fire. Now talking about some of the finishes and the thick visual thicknesses, this is going back to uh, just one of the companies that that produce these, the, uh, the scratchy mat, they call it a brushed and just a matte finish. Brushed being probably the most uh, common finish that you'll find. And they say that the brushed, uh, the one direction of the brushed uh, finish does help to hide uh, smudges and scratches more than the other ones do. Because as you know, with stainless steel, if you have stainless steel appliances, uh, that uh, your fingerprints will show up on that and your fingerprints will show up on stainless steel countertops as well. But this brushing uh, pattern in the finish will help uh, against that a little bit. However, um, this is uh, something also that can be wiped up fairly easily. And then uh, your thicknesses. So you see a half inch, inch and a half. You know, I, I think you can make just about whatever thickness you want. If you wanted to be, you know, eight inches thick, I think you could be ridiculous looking. But beauty's in the eye of the beholder. But you see there, they're using plywood for this. And you can see just how thin the actual stainless steel is. And, um, you know, probably visually, the difference between a 16 and an 18 is probably for most people be hard to pick up on um, but you can see there the, just that representation of that so just uh, that's sort of what's underneath the stainless steel countertop when you're looking at it unless there's what's called a metal channel and sometimes this is used but not generally in a residential um, usually in some kind of commercial appliance application rather and then you have your different uh, edges of course you have your just your your custom you know you're not custom but your your standard bull nose round over and then you have what's called a marine edge and um, the marine edge is obviously used probably on boats and it's used in commercial facilities so that uh, things uh, one don't roll roll off and spill off onto the floor um, this used to be done also with laminate countertops you could get an edge that had like a bump in it it's not very popular anymore and i'm not sure if it's still available but it it used to be available uh, but now just your standard bull nose is pretty much the, the run of the mill for almost every countertop that you find these days. That's sort of your, your go-to nothing fancy, just, you know, nice and nice and pretty, nice and sleek. And uh, let's go through some of the pros and the cons of, of stainless steel. And we'll, we'll chat about that. So if you're thinking about getting stainless steel countertops, these are the things you can be considering and uh, whether or not it's something for you. Now, one of the questions I do get asked quite a bit about, of course, is like, why don't more people choose stainless or what, you know, what about stainless steel? Of course, I, I think regardless of all the pros and cons that stainless steel, it's basically one look. So there's not a whole lot of options. Now, I do realize that whatever countertop you're choosing, you're, you're basically choosing one look as well. So if you like a veined pattern of quartz, um, and you purchase that or marble or decked in or porcelain or whatever you, you buy, corian, laminate, whatever the thing is you're buying, whatever the pattern is, you're basically stuck with that pattern like you'd be stuck with stainless steel. However, when you're looking at all these other options for countertops, there's so much more variety. And with stainless steel, you really just have one, you know, with some minor, you know, alterations. but most mostly if you're going for any other countertop you have a plethora of choices that you can choose from and this is not the same with the stainless steel so you have to really like the look of stainless steel if you're going to be purchasing and putting it in your kitchen and the thing is is that it is a particular look and so because of that not everyone's going to like it and because of the quartz industry and the stone industry and all all how it's you know, everywhere, that is something that more people will, will look to because they, you know, they can see how pretty it is. It's in all the pictures and blogs and on the internet, everyone talks about it. And so the, uh, the, the people looking for this particular surface will probably be, you know, a smaller group. That's sort of why I think it, it's not as popular. 
Um, I could be wrong, but that's just my thought. All right, number one pro is that it's very hygienic. So they use it, it's food safe, it's it's uh, food grade safe, which is really important. And that just means basically that, you know, it's you can it, it's not gonna hold bacteria or microbes, um, or at least those things can be cleaned up very easily. They're not gonna get a hole in the surface and you can have an unsanitary surface. So it's a very hygienic surface. And uh, that is important for a lot of people, uh, especially through the last, you know, four years that we came through, hygiene is on more people's minds now than ever before. And one of the after effects of going through a pandemic is that where you would never probably sanitize your hands, now you just kind of do it automatically, even though you, you never really did it before, but now you're kind of doing it more, even though you're not scared of getting any disease, maybe you just it's kind of automatic, uh, almost for some people. So uh, there'd be a lot of people who really love the, the hygienic nature of this kind of countertop. Um, and if you love the look of it, it's it's very pretty. And that's where it comes down to. It's the look is that, um, you know, if you don't like that particular look, then it's, it's not going to be something you're going to want to have. And you're not going to find stainless steel countertop that looks like stone. You know, now they do have paintable stainless steel and but that's not something you're going to use for the residential application it's very uh, it's heat resistant so it's not going to scorch you can put hot pans right on it one of the benefits of countertops um, that i like is heat resistance so centered stones uh porcelain you know decked in stuff like that centered stones porcelain uh, stainless steel is heat resistant so you can you can put scolding hot pot right down on it it's not going to burn and of course, the the other side of this is that most people will use uh, a, a trivet or something anyway when they're putting on something on their countertop. And even if you have laminate, you know, you, you protect it. But with this, at least, you don't have to worry about that. It's not going to burn or make a scorch mark or the binding, you know, elements in that uh, the binding agents are not going to get uh, scorched or burned because of um, because of the, the material. So it's heat resistant, which is uh, which is great. You can see here a real visual thickness there. That's probably a, you know, gosh, a four inch drop maybe. And um, so, you know, so again, a very particular look and uh, you either like it or you don't like it or you like it, but you like it on the picture, maybe just not in your home. Um, it's non-porous. So very, uh, very important to know it's non-porous. Now, every surface, there's no real, tr you know, every surface is to a degree non-porous. Um, I'm not sure if it's a hundred percent non-porous, but we're down to like the, the nano, you know, measurements, um, of, of porosity here. Um, so there's just, water's not going to penetrate into that surface and be able to stay there and, uh, cause any kind of bacteria to grow. So this just kind of goes along with the fact that it's, it is hygienic and this is kind of the reason why. And then uh, porosity for, for countertops, you know, as opposed to, um, a granite or a stone, where there is quite a lot more, per, you know, it's, it's, they're, they're not non-porous. You can get denser ones than others, uh, but that's why they're sealed so that they can, um, you know, repel water. But this doesn't need any kind of sealant, any kind of chemical on it. It's already porous, uh, you know, coming right off the roll, which is great. There's a lot of stainless happening here. So it's definitely a look. While some people like the all white kitchen, like myself, others like the all stainless steel kitchen, uh, like this one here. And, um, so, you know, it's a particular style, very durable. Now it will dent or scratch, sorry, my camera. And those things can be repaired. And that's not something that is, um, you know, really, they don't really concern themselves too much with that. So when you're talking to fabricators or people who are selling this product, it, it, you look at your stainless steel sink, it, you know, it has scratches, they can be buffed out, it can be repaired, uh, soak in this product. But otherwise, unless you really come onto it with something, it's going to be very durable. Now they don't recommend that you cut on it like any surface. You can use a cutting um, board, use a wood chopping block or something like that, and uh, you'd be fine. But it is a very durable surface overall, and you, you don't generally have to worry about this one uh, cracking or splitting, or if you drop something on it that's going to going to chip off uh, because this is uh, it's it's very that won't happen with with stainless steel apparently. Here's a little one here. So this has a smaller, smaller edge to it, smaller thickness. And um, most of these are all just as kind of a standard brushed look. 
and they're stainless. Well, obviously they're stainless. That's where they get their name. Uh, they won't stain. And that's important for a lot of people, depending on maybe the style of cooking that you do and the type of ingredients that you use. But uh, also just the ease of cleaning, which is very good. And the fact that you don't have to worry about, you know, dealing with stains. There's there's a lot of great products out there that are stain resistant as well. You know, we, I know we talk about quartz um, that 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 resists a lot of stains. Some granites are better at it than others, depending on the coating that's on there. Sintered stones are excellent for stain resistance. Porcelain, excellent for that. And stainless steel gets its name because it won't stain. It's stainless. There's a nice back of an island. Some stainless on there. I like that idea for an island, actually. All right, low maintenance. You don't have to seal it. Don't have to do anything to it. So for those of you who are in the quartz market and you like the fact that you don't have to do anything, it's just one and done. Uh, this is pretty much the same, but um, you know you don't really have to do a lot to it. If you wanted to buff it, maybe I guess you could to get a scratch out. But uh, generally speaking, you don't, you don't have to do anything to it over its lifetime to keep it up to par with being stainless and non-porous or you know antimicrobial or any of those types of things. So you don't have to do a lot anything to it. It's low maintenance, top wipe it up easy to clean and um people really love that here's one being installed two big sinks in that one looks like some kind of stone on the other part and then just the island so that's something you could consider is just having you know like a butcher block top you could have a stainless steel top it is recyclable in fact the leftover materials often get recycled into the next job on in, in a lot of these places because it's completely recyclable so you don't have to worry about a lot of waste plus this product when you're sick of it you're like okay i'm done with this stainless steel look i want to have something else then that product can be re reused and remolded and refit into something else which is a great uh, feature here again is just a piece on the island like personally for me it's not my favorite look i i you know just but that's why we have options because we all like different things all right here's some of the negatives so it's scratchable so if you're cutting on it or if you you know drag something across it that has you know some kind of ability to scratch it it, it, it can scratch so again look at your sink and do you see that you know you my i know my sink has got marks in it and it's got one of those bottom uh, grids that has like rubber feet those rubber feet over time just cause these little wear marks and you know i usually buff it out with a mr clean magic eraser and just completely you know get rid of all that stuff and it really comes out really 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 nice um but it is scratchable so that's something to consider if you're worried about that that's something that can happen this is an interesting one here but this is just a different finish again like a hammered finish not something you're going to see every day i'm not sure if i would want to have that that would seems it would be you know, you're just creating like more surface area to clean. This is more, more grime can get in. It's still non-porous, but you're just creating all the spot that a simple wipe not might not get. But anyway, it's dentable. <laughs> so it is dentable. This, of course, uh, was, is on purpose. It's the finish. But if you, you know, came onto it with a you know, hard enough bang or you drop something very heavy, you can dent it. And, um, you know, but again, I think normal wear and tear is um, something that to be considered. If, if you're abusing it, yeah, you can dent it. I think normally um, the chances of you denting it are, are kind of a low unless you want to painstakingly hammer it into this. There's another island for you with uh, looks like a three centimeter. That has the marine edge on it, which is interesting. I'm not sure I want that on a kitchen countertop. It's cold. So, you know, um, visually it's cold where if you put a butcher block, warms things up uh, visually, but also it's cold to touch. And uh, that's not something you want in your kitchen and something to consider. But yeah, it just has a, it's just a colder look and it's cold to touch. If, if that even matters. Um, stones are like that. Stones are, are generally colder. We're um, centered stones are a little, little bit warmer still. Cory and stuff like that's you know not cold to touch uh so just 
I don't know if you've ever put your elbows or hand, you know, your your hands down or your arms down on a on a cold countertop. It's like, ah, this is gonna be like that. Ah. Like sitting in a hospital, one of those I don't know, it just reminds me, this reminds me of hospital. You know, people talk about white kitchens and how it looks so hospital like. Um this this looks like uh, more hospital to me. Here's a molded sink, which is quite nice, and it looks like the backsplash is all molded there. So uh, again, that's that's great for just keep keeping water out of places you don't want water to be. And uh, but it's noisy. Now they they you know they do things to help with that, but generally speaking, it's 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 metal. It's going to be noisier than you know other services. And um, while they have dampening pads for sinks and. They can do things with the substrate to help it be less noisy. You are, you know, banging on metal here. So let's just be be real. It's going to be a little noisier than your butcher block or your Corian or even your your granite. And if that's a deal breaker, well, there you go. Here's a real thin one here uh, with the Mola sink. So very. That's a pretty look. I, I kind of like that. That that looks a little more sleek and and something that's uh, quite modern looking. It's expensive. Yeah, very expensive um, in terms of some, like, it's in the mix. I guess that's, it's, you know, if you're thinking of, well, I, I could get laminate or I get maybe like Corian or I can get quartz or I can get decked and like, this is going to be in the mix there. 60 to 150, that's what you're going to pay for mostly any stone, mostly any uh, quartz surface. Um, so it's, it's not something that's a, you know, it's not a cheap option. It is expensive and that's fine. It, it, sh I don't think it should be cheap. I think it, it should be, you know, valuable and you have to consider all those options. All right. What's your thoughts? Let me know. What are you thinking about, about quartz countertop? This is something or not quartz, but stainless steel countertops. Um, is this something that you would consider or are you, like, no way, no how. I'm not ever going to get myself stainless steel. Joey Lynn says, hey, Mark, I'm so glad to listen on my way home after designing on 2020 for eight straight hours. Um, 2020 is a design program that designers use. It's the best one on the market out there, uh, in my opinion. And, um, yeah, eight straight hours. I, I, I've been there, and I still am there some days. Um, but thanks for listening, Jody, and that's awesome. I love 2020. <laughs> Susan has some. Mine isn't noisy that I've noticed. It has extra dampening under it, and I think the hammered finish also helps. Interesting. So yeah, um, that is that is good to know. Like you know, I, this is all relative, right? I mean, what's noisy to someone might not be noisy to others, but that is one of the things that most people say is one of the the cons when you're kind of looking around at this stuff. Um, but that's good to know. And they do use dampening pads, which is good. Edward, thicker gauge stainless should be less noisy than thinner grade um, gauge. Yeah, thicker gauge should be a little a little better. And um, I'm not sure if you can choose the... Well, I guess you could probably choose the gauge when you're buying the countertop. But um, I've never priced stainless steel, so I'm not exactly sure. Trina says, not my look, uh, super informative. Yeah, thank you. It's not my look either. Um, but, you know, was there an experience where the countertop rusted? Well, apparently, uh, stainless steel is the, the, the mixture of stainless steel for this 304 grade is resistant to corrosion and rusting. So, um, so no. Now, there could have been an experience where it did, where they weren't, where they didn't use the proper gauge. I can't see that happening. I'm sure they'd know the gauge, they're, they're the grade they're using, not gauge rather. So it, it is rust resistant in nature of, of just its makeup. So it's not going to rust. Um, but other grades of stainless steel can rust, but, but not the countertop grades. No way. No, hell, no way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just, uh, it's just one of those things. People like it or do they don't like it? Yes. I want stainless for tiny house kitchen because it's lightweight. Cool. 
yeah, I, you know, for a tiny house, it can be a really cool feature. It is lightweight and, you know, again, very durable. Um, Jody's saying that, yeah, the, uh, lower the gauge, thicker the steel. So, um, like I was mentioning, if you have an 18 or 16 gauge sink, that's fairly decent. Um, you can get lower and higher thicknesses also. Some grades of stainless can pit if they get salt on it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's the 304 grade that they use in residential or um, the commercial applications. Those are things that are interesting, though, to uh, to know that to ask you know the fabricators for sure. What's Vonda saying? I have gold stainless steel farmhouse sink. Gold stainless steel. So, um, so some of these colors. So one of the questions I get asked is like, what about black stainless? and stuff like that so the way they make black stainless the stainless steel is made in the exact same way and has the same properties but they put this polymer in it to change its color so don't often see that in countertops i couldn't actually find an example of one but for appliances like black stainless it's the same grade stainless steel but with this polymer to change the color and i'm assuming it might be the same thing with um, the way this this sink could be made as well All right. Welcome, Violet. So I must have missed something, but <laughs> congrats, Helen, on securing your next move. Great, great to be in here after watching Mark's very informative Saturday. Thank you. Um, yeah, of course. Interesting, eh? The stuff about um, well, there's Violet. Hi, Violet. Yeah, well, ten years old. Didn't wrestle. Depends on the quality of stainless. Interesting. Um, yeah, barbecue is kind of that problem. One of the issues I think, I never cover my barbecue and I don't have an issue with it. Sometimes when you cover it, it can cause a problem. But I think it also comes down to the grade of stainless that you use and um, or they use in, in making it. So, yeah. But it shouldn't rust if it's the if it's a particular, the right grade, it's not supposed to rust. I've thought about using stainless steel for my caravan due to the weight. Look, oh, look at the matte finishes. Personally, I like the warmth of copper more. Yeah, that's the thing. It's the um, it's it's the the look that people either like or don't like, and it is a colder look. Um, it does look more laboratory like, you know, in some of those places. But it, but like when done correctly, like this particular one here, I'll put this one back up. Uh, like this particular one, I, I like the look of that. It's it has a nice, more of a matted finish to it. Almost doesn't. It's not too too shiny. Uh, something like that is quite pretty, but um, it all comes down to the look that you're going for. Tracy, the company that I research gives choices of moisture-resistant MDF wood backer or stainless. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that would be good to to um, have a choice in selecting and uh, moisture-resistant MDF. Sounds like there's a lot of chemicals in there. Um but that's 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 good to know because although the stainless is moisture resistant the substrate isn't and that is going to absorb water so it's something to to consider um and i think in commercial applications if i'm i think i could be wrong on this they use the, the channel system so there's these reinforcing uh stainless channels underneath that give it the structure and they don't use uh, anything that can be um you know a problem with water Cool, cool, cool. All right. Yeah, the thin profile looks much less industrial. It does. It, it kind of has a, you know, a nice, unique look to it. Mark's last Saturday's vlogs, countertops, they're not quartz. Excellent viewing if considering your options. Thanks, Helen. I know um, <laughs> I know you're pro-Korean out there. Um, yeah, if you didn't watch Saturday's video last Saturday, if you're watching this Wednesday, like on April 3rd, um, the the I just touched on the, the different countertops you can choose if you don't want any silica um, in your countertop, but more so because of the quartz issue with it being banned in Australia and, um, you know, what you can do to to purchase other options. So it was a it was a 
I thought it was a pretty, pretty decent video. Um, I'm not patting myself on the back, but I, I, I enjoyed making that one. Loved your video, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. I missed all the previous comments from way up before. So if you if you have a question that I didn't get to, um, or if you have a question now, please uh, put it in the chat. But is uh, is this something that you think about um, when you're selecting countertops? Has, has it been offered to you? I guess if you're on the market for a countertop, you're out there looking at you know home hardware or Home Depot or Lowe's or or wherever um, you know wherever you're you're buying um, your kitchen or your countertop, you're looking maybe just to redo your countertop. I'm interested to know, is stainless steel presented as an option? Because it was never, I never presented it as an option because it wasn't something that we had access to, um, you know, to, to sell. So I don't know, is it, I, and I know that some places have like these prefab tops of stainless, but um, that's something different. You can just buy off the shelf. I'm, I'm talking about you're doing a, a kitchen. Is this, is this something that you have access to out there? And I'd like to know, you know your thoughts on that if you've recently been looking at uh, kitchen countertops and thinking about upgrading or or doing a kitchen renovation has that option been presented to you and and do you um do you you know did you what what kind of the pricing was it how did the you know what what did you think about it it'd just be interesting to see um because it's not something you you go into most like you go to Home Depot or any place like that, you're not going to see a lot of stainless options. You're going to see laminate, you're going to see quartz, you're going to see granite, you're going to see Dexan. Um, you're not going to see, um, you're not going to see much stainless. Becky says, I've seen stainless panels for use around stoves to protect butcher block. Um, yeah, actually, um, you, I haven't, I've seen this as well. Um, and they say that, uh, yeah, if you're going to install that, uh, that's very good to do. Um, and it'll definitely help with, you know, with, with that, that issue of being around a stove or, you know, protecting the wall and whatnot. It's a very good surface for that too. If you want to put it on, on the wall as a backsplash, um, that can definitely be, uh, be something that you can do. Uh, East coast countertops in Halifax has them. Oh, interesting. Really? I'll have to go visit. That's good to know. With my demo that was just completed, stainless steel countertops were not an option. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Julie saying the same wasn't suggested as an option. Huh. Jody, let me ask you. Do you um, do you offer stainless steel countertops? Is that something that you would have on the menu or uh, or not? If you're um, if you're out there, I'd love to know. We cook with turmeric or turmeric, and I think it might have stained quartz on your countertop. Yeah, it did. It, it, yeah, a little magic eraser will help get that out, but uh, it can stain quartz depending on the like the the ingredients, how much uh, binding resident is is in there. Um. Because of that, stainless and soapstone are options we're considering. Yeah, soapstone. Though I mean, hey, they're both great options. You know, if you like soapstone's great, um, very dense, um, which is which is good. Helps to resist uh, um, stains. Joey's saying no awful. So okay, you're not you're not offering stainless. <laughs> All right, cool. Good to know. I mean, I just, I just wondering. Like, like people do ask about it on on videos all the time, and they're wondering, like, what what do you uh, what do you think about stainless? Is a good idea? Is it out? You know, is it something that we should think about? Um, quartz, granite, and quartzite. Yeah, maybe porcelain, but rarely. Yeah, I mean, those are the go tos. What about? Uh, Quartzite, does turmeric stain quartzite anyway? Um, quartzite, of course, is a natural stone. It um, it should it's very it's dense. Um, it should be sealed. Normally, it would be pre-sealed, depending on where it's coming from. Um, if it's pre-sealed, you have a really good chance of it not staining. But yeah, if someone has actual experience with that, I'd love to know too, because. Um, if you want something that's not going to stain, 
with turmeric, you you want you want porcelain, um, like Jody's saying here, or dactin, or neolith, or lapatek. Uh, these surfaces are not going to um, stain uh, or stainless steel, turmeric stainless steel. I like the look uh, of a stainless panel between the range and the hood. Yeah, that's a nice industrial look if you if you go for that. That's uh, very uh, easy to do at time of installation. He loves to cook with turmeric. Yeah, if you if you if you want something that's definitely not going to stain, the stainless isn't going to stain. But um, you don't like the look of stainless, like porcelain, dactin, those those ultra compact centered stones. They're not going to stain. Um, you 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 don't have to worry about it. Yes, that's the title. Six counter-ups that are not quartz. <laughs> um, I've worked in commercial kitchens all my life. I love the ease of cleaning and hot pots straight on the counter. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and I, I hear that from people who have worked in an industry where they've worked with stainless steel and, um, you know, it's uh, it's a great product that way. People have good positive things to say about it in regards of its usage, uh, just not its look. A product that cleans stains really well is Folex. It's a carpet spot remover. It's great for all types of stains. I've used it on my quartz countertop. Wow. Well, that's interesting. I would say though, um, and this that then that's great. I would just say anything that you clean anything with. If it has a warranty, of course. Um, oh, Canadian Tire sells it. Interesting. Um, just make sure that the the manufacturer's warranty covers stuff like that. That's all. Just to be careful. My cousins have stainless steel countertops in their kitchens and love them. There you go. Interesting. X Stone is another brand of centered stone, but is very limited in the U.S. right now. Why is it limited? I wonder. Um, is it limited just because it's uh, like from pricing or like shipping like Exxon I haven't heard of, but um, yeah, that's cool. Cindered Stone is probably one of my favorite countertop options out there um, overall. I have been waiting to see you live. Woo. What do you think about Black Islands, a Black Island and a white countertop? Um, well, I'm... I've never been called sir before. Well, except when I taught grade five. <laughs> that was that was scary. Um, thanks so much for being here on live. What do you think of Black Island with white counterups? I mean, it's it kind of like I like white counterups and I like black cabinets. So I think I'd have to see the whole thing put together. But generally speaking, I don't have an issue with it. Um, maybe you know, as a focal piece in the kitchen that can look really well. But um, I do love a matte black cabinet finish with like a modern door with uh, with white. I think can look beautiful. Um, of course, all these things are very relative to people's opinions. Um, so what I say can look nice. Someone else will be like, no, of course not. Um, so, yeah, I'm a Canadian. <laughs> Yeah, we just had a big Canadian tire like renovation that's like double the size of the old Canadian tire. It's like what? You like walk around in there forever. I love Canadian tire. If you're if you're a Canadian, it's just it's kind of like well, it's like Princess Auto in a way, but but different. Princess Auto's a little different, but it's like yeah. Anyway, Canadian tire is you can you can actually buy tires there too, um, but. Everything else you can buy there as well. Do you prefer honed or polished finish for quartz? Um, I'm just from the era of polished finishes, so I do prefer a polished finish. Um, but as it relates to granite, I'm not a big fan of a glossy granite finish, but they don't polish quartz to the same degree that they can polish a rock because of the binding agents it only polishes so much to a certain degree so i don't mind the the 
the glossiness, the shine of a quartz. Uh, though I I do like honed finishes, but they are less um, to me like just because of my history with in the industry. The I come from the glossy era, and so I, I kind of like that look. Um, but I do I I do love the um, the matte finishes. In fact, whenever we we'd be at a show somewhere, we'd be somewhere where they'd be showing us um, a honed finish. And everybody would be like, wow, like that's, isn't that pretty? But no one would ever sell it. They'd all be selling glossy. So um, I just prefer a polished finish. In fact, I, I bought laminate from my previous house that was high gloss laminate. It was an Arborite product. And um, it was, it was glossy. It was very expensive. And, um, People will be like, why would you bother? But it, it looked really, I thought it looked great. Smudged fingerprints galore, though. There are only a few places that carry X Stone. Interesting. I'll have to check it out. X Stone. Thanks for mentioning that brand. I've never heard of it, so that's cool. <laughs> Don't mess with a good thing. Yeah, it's classic, but that doesn't mean you can't mess with a good thing. You could make a good thing better. They made, I mean, your OTR Jackie is an example of that. You know, they messed. Uh, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. I'm only going to get myself in trouble. All right. Wife wants quartzite countertops in the Taj Mahal type color pattern. I like to bake bread, I'm assuming, and use tools on my countertop. Tools? No, you, you don't want to use your tools there. <laughs> Am I doomed? Any other options out there with similar natural look? Quartzite. Well, quartzite is definitely. If I was picking a natural stone, I'd probably pick a quartzite. I love the look of quartzite. Um, in terms of other granites, it's it's very hard. It's very dense. Um, I don't know about using tools. But I don't know what countertop I'd use tools on. And and that would be, you know, not a problem. So that's a good one. Uh, Jody loves Taj Mahal. She says that gorgeous in all caps. So I think be careful with the tools. Um, but yeah, quartzite's definitely the way to go. If you're break if you're baking bread. I don't think that's, uh, I, I don't know how if that kind of surface is great or not for that. I know like marble is great for baking, right? I don't know if it's the same with with um, a, a quartzite or not. Tools as in bench scrapers directly on there without damaging the counter. A bench scraper? I'm not sort of... I'm sorry. I don't know what a bench scraper is. It sounds damaging. <laughs> so I'd be careful with that one. Um, I would say, though, it sounds like something you're like sliding, not banging. If it's something sliding, you're probably better off with a sintered stone in terms of damage. Um, but yeah, that's a. I don't know if they have that particular style in like a dactin or a centered stone. I'm, I'm not sure. Jody might know. She's in the business. There goes my camera. That's just me, not you. All right. I have a DIY stainless plate on my island. Long story. It's a great to live with. Interesting. A stainless plate, like an inserted, like cutting board kind of plate. Yeah, I never, never, never heard of that before. <laughs> okay. What is the weight of the lightest weight stone counted out? Oh, that's a good question. I don't really know the lighter, the lighter weight. Um, I mean, I guess you could also figure what the thickness is. So if you're going with a two mil as opposed to a three mil or a three centimeter as opposed to two centimeter, 
uh, that would be, you know, lighter. But the actual stone itself, I'm, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. Anyone, anyone know? All right, Jody uses a bench scraper on her quartzite all the time. There's your answer. Get the quartzite. It's a good to go. Someone tell me what a bench scraper is, and I'll be good. A bench scraper is usually metal with a handle. Oh, to scrape dough. Okay. What they call it a dough scraper then? <laughs> What's it called a bench scraper for? Some are plastic too, but metal is more common. Jody's using it. She thinks it's fine. I think um, that's probably good. It's good enough for me. Interesting. Um, granite transformation is just stone overlay, probably not heavy. Yeah, I haven't looked into that yet, but that's something to to consider, some kind of overlay, a thin scape or something like that, um, if you want to do that. But uh, I, I don't know. I don't know the lightest stone out there for sure. I... Because usually there's a fabricator, an installation crew that's handling that stuff. And as the person who's selling it, normally I'm never touching it. You know, I'm, not, I'm, never, I'm never picking it up. So I, I don't really know enough. Actually, no, no one ever asked me that question before. That's a great question. It's called a bench scraper because a counter is called a bench in the UK. I see. Well... You learn something new every day. You get great questions asked, new information. I learn more on this than you probably do. <laughs> so thank you. Michael saying, yeah, porcelain or cinder stone would probably be the lightest. I would probably, yeah, you're probably right. For sure. Because um, just the material makeup of that, uh, you know, the clay powder and whatever they're using in there. So yeah, that is probably the lightest. How hard would a soapstone counter and sink be to maintain, keep clean? Not very hard. I mean, you don't really have to do anything to soapstone. You can oil it if you want just for the look of it, but um, otherwise you don't really need to uh, to do a whole lot to it. You just clean it like you would a regular countertop, soap and water cleanup. Um, yeah, I, I have a video on soapstone. You can check out uh, on the channel. If you just search in my channel, soapstone, it'll come right up for you. Um, It'll have all the information about soapstone there, but as far as I know, it's fairly, fairly good to deal with. A lot of these things, you know, I mean, it's anecdotally, you know, these are anecdotal things I'm saying because I don't, I don't have soapstone, so I don't know. But from what I can tell and what I read and what other people who I who've told me, um, I think it's it's pretty good that way. I don't know what it is you have. I missed something. Sorry. Must maybe a bench scraper. Uh, <laughs> it's a oh, here's the 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 piece. It's a full cover piece. Had to replace our cooktop. Oh, didn't want our new one. Didn't know the new one was smaller to put in place. I work in a welding shop, made a plate. Oh, that's cool. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Made a plate with the right size hole. Oh, that's cool. So it's like um like a framing, like it frames in the new uh, cooktop, I guess. If you can weld, that's pretty handy uh, skill to know how to do, <laughs> especially if you want stainless steel countertops. I did stainless backsplash in my prior kitchen. So easy. Uh, okay to live with. Cool. Yeah, there you go. I mean, if you like the look of it, and it, it, you know, it seems to be a very great surface to work with. So that's something to to definitely consider when you're when you're purchasing a countertop, and. Um, you know, we want we want durability. We want uh, our surfaces. We're paying a lot of money for a lot of these countertops, so we want them to perform the way we want them to perform and hold up the way they're supposed to to our usage of them. And those are all really important things for most of us. So that that's all stuff to consider with all of these uh, materials. And then it comes down to the particular look and style that you like. And if uh, stainless is one of those options, and there you go. I'll probably actually make a video on stainless steel countertops other than a live stream where it's a little more curated and less um me babbling on about stuff uh, in the future so if um if this uh, isn't doing it for you um put in the comments some things you'd like added to a video like that and i'll make sure that i can i can put it in there Catherine saying upper cabinets under cabinet lighting produces glare on highly polished stone 
Not sure what the finish on quartz due to the resin from Mark's comment. Unless installed lights are at an angle. Yeah. So generally, um, if they have a diffuser or if they're on an angle, if they're at the front 45 towards the back a little bit, uh, that de definitely helps. And like I mentioned in my lighting video, if um, if you're using pot like puck lights, that they over the gla the the beams overlap, that also helps reduce glare. Um, but that's de definitely something to consider is the um, the glossiness and uh, where those things are installed. So something to consider if you don't want that uh, that particular look. There's some things you can do about that, but one of them is the the polished um, stone. So, and I, I'm assuming on a stainless steel countertop there'd be quite a lot of reflectiveness obviously in that as well so something to think about as well interesting yes please options for stainless steel plates on countertop okay well that's <laughs> i might have to uh i might have to uh call up planes and bikes and figure out how that's done <laughs> because uh yeah that that's something uh, definitely to consider very cool uh, well, I hope this was somewhat uh, helpful for you if you're thinking about stainless steel, you're interested in it. I know uh, looking at how it's made, I thought was kind of interesting. I uh, never really considered that before, but I knew it came from somewhere. And so just considering the, you know, how it's made, the different grades that it comes in. In fact, it comes in different families and different grades, and then it's produced in different gauges and all this other stuff. So there's, there's quite a, a lot to it to come up with this final product. And uh, so I, I find that quite interesting you know, to go from just all these mixture of things in the vat somewhere with molten hot, you know, lava basically into your countertop is, is a pretty cool adventure that, that that material had. And it's, you know, from, from start to finish. So I, th I just think that's interesting. I hope you found some of that information interesting. And then uh, as far as the pros and cons go, you know, it's I think it's fairly Googleable the pros and cons. But from we can see, you know, even in the chats here that um, those who who like it, like it a lot. And uh, <laughs> so that's maybe a Canadian beer commercial slogan. I'm not sure. <laughs> I shouldn't be saying that. Uh, but it just seems to be the thing that um, that uh, that we're finding out, the people that, that like it, like it, for those reasons that it's very durable, easy to use, easy to clean, and they happen to like the look of it. So if Stainless steel is on the menu for you, then hopefully this helps you. But as we can see, and like I said, um, it's not offered to many people. So you might have to ask about it if you are interested in it when you're going to your supplier to uh, to get these kind of things. So awesome. Fun hanging with you guys tonight. Thanks so much. Yeah, Teresa, thanks so much um, for being here. I'm going to run too. And uh, everything's Google Googleable. That's, a, I mean, it, that's probably a word in the dictionary. Um, so this week uh, on the channel on Saturday, we're talking about uh, what's my video on Saturday all about. I got to think about it for a minute because uh, I can't even remember what it's all about. Let me see if I can find out what my video is about. I'll let you know and then I'm going to go. <laughs> I should know because I was just talking about it. Oh, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Never mind. I'm talking about trends. Um, I'm talking about the, the most controversial trends in kitchen design. And so I, I, I think they're interesting ones, actually. Uh, they're not your run of the mill. Like OTR is not on there. Open shelf is not on there. Um, not, not, nothing like that. These are, these are trends that, that a lot of people, they have a crossover into function. I'll put it to you that way. And so because they have a crossover into function, they have, um, you know, they're, applicable to many designs um these are interesting ones so yeah and otr is not on there uh, that you know i don't want to overdo the otr thing you know lose i don't want to lose jackie um so we, we left that one off the list but these are there's there's five of them and uh, i i think you'll you'll enjoy that if you are interested in in hating on some trends i don't i don't actually hate any of the trends i'm talking about but i do read that a lot of people are um you know, kind of have an opinion about these things and might not be that great. So Violet, nice to meet you as well. Thanks so much for being here on the live stream and everyone who joins every week. Um, I really appreciate it. And it makes the chat so much better while I'm rambling on about stuff that you can chat with each other and get questions answered. And it's a really great community. You guys really make this live stream what it is. Um, you know, I, I know that, um, 
if it wasn't for you guys, it'd just it'd be just me babbling on about stuff. So you thank you very, very much for being here. Um, we'll see you next Wednesday. And I, I think I'm going to have a guest next Wednesday, which would be great. Um, but I'll confirm that later on in the week, of course. And hopefully uh, we'll have a guest talking about kitch- the kitchen business and what it looks like to uh, to start, uh, you know, kitchen design business and a kitchen installation business. So I think that'd be interesting, a different perspective from somebody else in a different part of the the business that I'm in. And uh, that would be uh, really interesting. Yes, Judy, give it a thumbs up at least before you leave if you haven't already. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Have a great week and um, yeah, God bless. Bye-bye.